Okay, so I think it is about the time we should start. So, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the presentation of uh, bootstrapping the local kernel CI. So, at first, just uh, let me be a bit more specific about the time, time frame of, of a bootstrapping. Let's say it will, I'll try to tell you how to bootstrap a local kernel CI in less than a day. So, uh, what's this presentation all about? It's, it's about creating your own kernel CI uh, environments, which you can use to run your builds, tests, which uh, can be suitable if you are a kernel developer or a kernel CI developer or just want to test your patches. So who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Michał Gauka. I'm a software engineer who works for Collabra, which is a open source um, consulting company. And uh, my daily work is connected or is about the kernel CI development. So uh, who is actually aware of uh, Kernel CI. Who, who who know what kernel CI is? Okay. Who who has actually used kernel CI in in, in their job? Okay. So <clears throat> so kernel CI is basically um, an application, a system that's uh, supposed to test the upstream Linux kernel. So it's uh, it's meant to build the kernel, build the branch that you've selected, uh, upload the artifacts, then use the artifacts to run your tests and get the test results back together. So it's meant to be a single place in which you can uh, see the stored test results, the boot test results, view them, compare them, and track. What is more, it's, it's meant to work in a distributed way. So whenever you build the kernel, it, uh, the builds are distributed, then the artifacts are gathered in a single place. Well, all the test jobs are also distributed to the text test backends, which then feed the results back, back to the kernel CI. So in these terms, it becomes a bit difficult to set up a local instance, which you may need uh, for testing or developing. So just to see a bit of a kernel CI to those who are not using it, it's... Uh, when you, when you go with your browser to the kernelci.org page, you can actually see the kernel CI front end, and, and, and you can see what were the recent builds done by the kernel CI. You can see the boot tests, so you can precisely know which kernel, which branch, which tree was built, and uh, you can dig a bit to see the build blocks, to see the test results, so on and so on. So, let me start with the, my first days in the kernel CI. So, what, what is the kernel CI beginner's checklist? So, the first thing is to understand how the kernel CI works. So, what are the mechanisms, what is triggered by what? What, uh, what actions you need to take to actually get the results that you need. When you know the mechanisms, the logic-wise, you, you need to understand what's under the hood. So what are the applications involved to make the kernel CI up and running? What are the software components? What are the tools? What is interacting with, uh, with what? And, uh, what needs to be done to actually establish this interaction. Later, you can build your own local development environment. And the last of my goals was to start development when I have a fairly working local environment. So at first, let me tell you how the kernel CI roughly works. So the kernel CI, uh, well, this is some kind of a flow diagram. So the main part of the kernel CI is, uh, is Jenkins. So it's, it's the orchestrator that actually triggers the most of the jobs in, in the kernel CI. So there is a monitor job which monitors hourly the changes in the, 
in the kernel repository. So how does it know which repository it should to monitor? There is a YAML file. Uh, if you go to GitHub, kernel CI GitHub space, you will see that there is a config builds YAML file. It defines which builds will be done for what configurations and for what architectures and which kernel trees will be actually monitored. <clears throat> so every hour it checks if there are new commits. How does it know that the new commit has actually come? So it, uh, it goes to the storage, which is another part of the kernel CI, and it checks whether the last commit ID is the one that's uh, the last in the repository, or if it's not, it just starts the build trigger job. So build trigger, based on the configuration, runs the build jobs, so it tries to distribute and build the kernels that you need. And when it's done with the build, it uploads it back to the storage. So it uses the API endpoint, so it uses the backend REST API to put it to the storage, and the storage make, makes it available over, over HTTP for the next stages. When the builds are done, you can run the tests. So for, for the tests, uh, you need a test backend. Usually it's Lava, so I just put here the uh, Lava part. So the tests, based on the uh, based on the done uh, of the build on the builds done, the test jobs are generated and uh, submitted to Lava. Together with the test jobs, Lava gets the callback, which is uh, which is used when the test jobs are done. So when the when the test job is done, it calls the callback and submits the test results back to the uh, kernel CI backend. After that, it sends uh, uh, the the test results are available in the in the front end, and the test results emails are being sent. There is also a separate part that tries to detect the regressions and do the bisections uh, to detect which part or which which commit actually caused the boot error, but it is, uh, it's not the part of this presentation. It won't be covered here. So basically, there are a few <coughs> work phases. So you know, we probe the repository, then we build the kernel, then we upload all the artifacts and the metadata back to the uh, to, to kernel CA backend. Then we're ready to generate, run the tests, collect the results, and report the results. So it's quite a lot to have done um, on a single PC. So what, what are the parts, what are the software parts that are involved in it? So basically, kernel CI is, um, it consists of two parts, the kernel CI backend and the kernel CI frontend. Both of them are like fully fledged web applications. So the kernel CI backend exposes two endpoints. One is storage, which is uh, just a simple HTTP endpoint that allows you to download the artifacts. And the API endpoint, which is used to communicate with the API to store the results, to store the artifacts, and do all the job that's needed. In the backend, it also uses the Celery, which is a distributed task queue. It also uses Redis for some session management, and all the data is stored in the MongoDB, so Mongo actually stores the collection of documents responsible for storing data about builds, test, test groups, test cases, and so on. So the test, uh, so the API endpoint and the storage endpoint are used by the external applications like Jenkins and Lava to interact with the kernel CI. So Lava uses the storage to download the artifacts and download all the files that's needed. That it, that it needs for testing. Jenkins uses the storage and the API to push the results and interact with the backend. Frontend also uses the API to get the results, as you've, as you've seen on the web page, on the frontend web page of the kernelca.org. This is just an application that's calling the backend API to retrieve all the, all the data. So 
there is quite a lot of things that you need to run on your machine to have a local environment. So my first take on the setup of a local development environment was to go to the kernel CI GitHub space and use the kernel CI front-end config and the kernel CI back-end config repositories. They store the Ansible uh, playbooks that have like the recipes to set up the front-end and the back-end. Uh, they are meant to set up like a fully-fledged production environment. Uh, my next part of my plan was to install Lava. So I needed a Debian machine, and Lava is already packaged for Debian, so you can just do apt get install. Then I needed Jenkins, so I can easily install it from the Debian package. And then I need to configure the system. So I, so I need to create the necessary APA tokens so all the parts can actually talk properly to each other. I need to configure Lava, so I need to set up a virtual device that will run my tests. So I need to de define the QMU device type, de define the QMU device itself, and then I need to recreate the Jenkins jobs, which is kind of a big work if you, if you, if you may judge by the diagram that I've shown before. So what were the results? Well, I, I, I set up the environment, and this is the method uh, proven to work. It's used in the, product, in the kernel CI production. It's used in the kernel CI staging environment. So if you're brave enough to go through all the necessary configuration, it will give you a nice environment quite similar to the one that's run on production. What are the cons? Well, it takes quite a lot of time to set, set, set it all because you need to set up the virtual machines or the physical machines, set up the network in between them, um, and especially you need to set up the Jenkins jobs. As you, as, you, as you probably see while doing it, not all of them are the pipeline jobs. Some of them are the good old matrix jobs. So recreation of the whole environment takes quite a lot of time. Apart from that, you need to do some changes in the Ansible playbook so it suits your local environment. And well, it's enough to say that the install file for the Ansible configuration itself is about 300 lines. So it's not, not a simple, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a time consuming task. So after some time, well, I, I got the environment running, and after some time, I just figured out that there might be a simpler way uh, to set up a local development environment that will give me maybe not a fully fledged environment, but something a bit more minimal that will be able to do the build, upload the artifacts, run the tests, get the results, maybe with, without all these uh, unnecessary steps, maybe without the whole orchestration. So. The second take on the setup of the local environment was that I would like to install kernel CI and Lava in a dockerized version. Then I would like to just configure my local environment and possibly get rid of Jenkins. In the meantime, Guillaume Tucker, who is one of the kernel CI de developers, developed a tool that's called KCI Build. And uh, it nicely wraps all the kernel build phases so you can run them separately and script it the way you actually need. So first things first, let's start with the containers. There is a container maintained at the, or the Docker image contained, uh, maintained in the kernel CI GitHub space. It's called kernel CI Docker. However, it's uh, still a work in progress, and it's a bit outdated. It's not fully functional. It doesn't include, for example, the storage. So I kept digging, and it occurs that uh, the automotive great Linux project forked this repository. Unfortunately, it's not easy to, to, to be upstreamed, but the fork itself is uh, more functional than the, than the Docker image that's available at the official kernel CI space. It provides you with all the necessary components. So it uh, sets up the backend, it sets up the frontend proxy, 
the Celery, Redis, Mongo, what have you. It generates the API token during the startup, and it makes sure that the front end and back end has already exchanged the token, so they are ready to talk to each other right after the start. And it's also meant to be used in the, for the development purposes. So if you're a kernel CI developer or you want for some reason modify, modify the kernel CI source code, you can easily plug it in. It, it just needs you to uh, put it in the certain directory, which is then mounted as a volume in the Docker. So it uh, simplifies already quite a few steps that don't need to be manually done. There is also a set of containers. They are not official Lava containers, but they are based on them. And Danru, which is, uh, who is, who is also one of the kernel CI developers, created this Docker um, compose files that takes the Lava master, Lava slave, and all the necessary proxy and database packages, wraps it in one thing, and lets you install the Lava environment as, as a single command. In the meantime, it pre-configures the Lava master for you, so it creates the admin account, and it creates the virtual device type, the KMU device type, and uh, it creates the KMU device instance. So you start with Lava running and uh, having already configured the KMU device for you. So if you're a developer, it's almost everything you need to run your tests. So it facilitates a lot. And uh, running the kernel CI and uh, Lava containers is fairly simple. However, there are still some manual steps that need to be done. You need to configure these two set of dockers to interact with each other. So let's start with the beginning. So the kernel CI uh, can be started with the helper script, which will provide you with some useful information. It will tell you what your master API token is. You will probably need this to set up a few, a few things later. And it will tell you on which ports, which part of the kernel CI is actually working. So you have already a running access uh, to front and back end and storage, and you have the API token. The Lava containers are not that talkative, but the only thing you need is just to use the make file that's included. You just run it and it runs Lava, it runs the Lava web panel and the REST API on the port 80. So we have two running sets of containers. We can access them all, but they cannot access each other. This is the first thing you need to, to do after the setup. The easy workaround is just to connect the Docker network uh, of the uh, kernel CI Docker with the network of the uh, Lava, so you just need to call a few Docker network connect commands to connect the Lava containers to the do kernel CI Docker. Then you need to configure the lab. Uh, the laboratory is a needed instance. It's meant to represent the place where you store your devices and you run the tests. So <coughs> it boils down <coughs> to generating another API token. You can use it, you can do it with the REST API, but it's not always very handy. However, there is a tool, or the whole repository called kernel CI admin, and, it connect, uh, and the repository con contains the KCI tool, which is the admin tool for the kernel CI backend. If you run it, you can easily, with a single command, do all the create, read, update, delete, work connected with the tokens, lab, labs, etc. So behind the scenes, it uses the kernel CI API, but you just do not really need to remember which endpoints you need to call and what arguments you need to pass. So, and it can serve you to administer, uh, to administer um, a few kernel CI instances. All you need to do is just to fill out the settings.py file. 
it's a kind of a simple file which contains just a Python dictionary, and the dictionary needs to contain the access token, the one that you, you were already provided when starting the container, the URL that, uh, that was also visible there, and you need to set up an arbitrary name for your kernel CI instance. So as long as it is Python dictionary, the only limitation is that you cannot have two libraries of the same name. So you issue the KCI command, the add lab is, is the command that uh, lets you add the laboratory. You need to specify the lab name, the administrator's uh, name and email, and you're basically done. If you run it from the command line, it will do all the necessary changes in the backend and will display the laboratory name and the token that's supposed to be used by this lab. The manual part is that you need to access the Lava admin panel, so you just need to access the admin URL at your Lava instance, and uh, you need to pass the, to paste the token there. And what, you, what is quite important and not mentioned in too many sources is that you need to put the callback name that's going to be used by your job in the description field. If you don't do it, it tends to end up with the authorization failure when, and, uh, when trying to uh, push the test results back to kernel CI. Later, you need to generate the token for your Lava device, uh, for your Lava instance, as you're going to uh, submit the test to the Lava instance, you will need this token. And basically, you're done. You have the kernel CI and Lava running. So the next thing is that you probably don't really need a fully-fledged Jenkins instance in your, uh, in, your, in your environment, so you can use the kernel CI build. As I mentioned before, it's a quite new thing. It's, it has been developed, uh, I guess, a month or maybe two months ago. Uh, the full documentation is, uh, can, can be found on the kernel CI wiki, uh, which is hosted on GitHub. So the KCL build is basically the tool that was meant to give you the opportunity to get rid of Jenkins and replace it with a different orchestrator. So it wraps up all the phases you, all the phases that you need to build your kernel, starting from configuring the repository, ending up on uploading the test artifacts, and you can run it from anything you need. Specifically, you can run it from the common line, which is the uh, which is the way I use it quite frequently to just test uh, things that I need. So this is, this is how you prepare the build. So you need to clone the repository. Then you can call the KCI build update repo command that will prepare the repository for you so it will be ready to do the build. It will set it up due to the configuration that you have in your build configs YAML file. So when, you, so when you're done with that, basically you can generate all the fragments. It's also based on the, configuration, on the configuration of your build. So the config parameter takes the config name from the config, uh, build configs YAML file. Then the build kernel is the command that uh, runs the compilation process. What's worth mentioning is that you can uh, specify the dev config that you need. You may specify the architecture and the build build environment, and build environment is not the compiler that's going to be used, it is the build environment label that's used inside the build configs YAML file. So this is, this is the label that will be stored in the build metadata in the kernel CI backend. Then you can install the kernel and you're ready to publish the artifacts, which is as easy as that. You already have the uh, appropriate API tokens generated for you during the container star startup. So you just provide the API URL, you provide the token, and you run the push kernel command that will upload all the binaries, 
to the storage, and then you um, run the publish kernel metadata, uh, which will provide all the metadata and store it in the kernel CI backend. So after that, you will be able to run the frontend or access the web frontend, and you should see the builds uh, uh, appearing there. Next part is to run the tests. And again, there is a couple of tools uh, that facilis facilitates that. So in the kernel CI core repository, you can find the Lava V2 scripts. One of them is jobs from API that's basically used to generate the Lava jobs based on available builds, device, the devices, and test plans. So it will come up with a set of a YAML file ready to be fed to Lava. The other one is uh, Lava v2 submit jobs, which can actually take the uh, files that you've generated with the previous script and fit them to Lava, and Lava will start the job based on the data provided, run, run them, take the results, run the callback, store, uh, store the results back at the kernel CI backend. So this is basically all you need to run your local environment. You do not really need to have a full setup with all the components. You can run a few Docker containers. You can use uh, tools that will facilitate that. And yeah, uh, let me summarize on that. So using the Dockerized kernel uh, CI and the Lava Lab can be a good choice in case you don't really need a fully fledged production environment and it takes a lot less time to set it up. And it's always a good idea to use the KCI tool from the kernel CI admin, not uh, using the kernel, uh, kernel CI backend uh, calls directly. It wraps you up the REST API. It provides a nice way to do all the uh, work connected with the token management and all the administrative tasks connected with the kernel CI backend. And the kernel CI build is always a nice tool uh, to run the build phases and store the artifacts after the build without running the whole process in Jenkins. So if you have the build done, you can push the, uh, push the artifacts as many times as you need. You can easily re rerun the phases that, that you need. And uh, as you may see, it's, uh, it's quite easy to set up the uh, local environment nowadays. However, there are still things to do. So the future plans are to develop the KCI test tool, which, is, um, which will be a similar tool to KCI build, but this time for tests. So uh, you, can <coughs> you, you could have one tool to generate the test jobs, fit the test jobs, probably trigger the email sending, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, there is also some work to do with the kernel CI and the Lava containers, as at the moment they are like two separate instances, so there is a job that will be done to provide something like the fully integrated test environment, so you don't, to get rid of the manual steps of token exchange between the Lava and, uh, and kernel CI. And this is basically it. Thank you for attention. Uh, I think that we have some time for, for questions. Yes, sure. Oh. Well, it, it really depends uh, on, the, on the developer. So basically, the vast majority of the tests are the boot tests. So we just uh, as, uh, check if the, if the kernel boots uh, with the, on a certain hardware configuration. But there are also tests connected with video for Linux and probably some more that I don't remember. Yes, yeah, the, like uh, the, the labs that are distributed like uh, in several places in the world, they have like their sets of real boards. So the 
chemo is, is just the one that you may need in your local environment to like do some dry runs. But if you need tests on the, on the real hardware, they, there are like several lava dispatchers and with connected uh, like several devices of different types so they, they can run the tests, even, even the tests specific for the particular platform. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Kubernetes guy, so probably uh, I don't know too well. But yeah, if 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 it if it can automate the whole process, I'm absolutely up for that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't get it. Sorry. Oh, all right. Well, uh, basically, it's meant to test the kernel. So we have just a few root file systems packaged for the uh, for for the specific purposes, like for the specific type of tests. So basically, it's either uh, build root based or it is a Debian based root file system, but. Uh, uh, as long as, uh, as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think you can replace it with whatever you need. Well, there are no more questions, so thank you very much for your attention.